Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Innovation Podcast, your source for all things innovation. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Rob Lubo on the line, and he's co-founder and chief of Conversational AI over at BotCopy. Rob, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. It's a pleasure to speak with you today. All right, so uh, excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to talk about Conversational AI, and uh, also want to talk about that Genentech uh, product launch that you have coming up. Um, but before we do that, let's go a little bit further into what you're doing over at BotCopy. So tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Uh, at Bob Copy, we um, we consider ourselves to be the front end of the conversational AI industry, or the front end of choice anyway. Um, we're a SaaS company, so software as a service, where our primary goal is to connect the best back end conversational framework um, with our front end, which is the most powerful front end, uh, to host a bot. Um, so that's a lot to, to say in one sentence, so I can I can unpack that for you. Let's um I, let's just jump right in. So conversational AI. I mean, where do you, where do you want to go with this one? Well, you know, we believe that conversational AI is finally you know a really arrived in 2020, and it, it's able to cut costs, um, boost profits, um, improve customer experience in a really dramatic way. Um, whereas in past years there were some experiments here and there. But in general, chatbots didn't really impress users as much as they could have. Um, but this year, it's really kind of maturing. And a big reason for that is, um, you know, companies are starting to learn how to use the technology. Can you give us, a, a, and, and you're right, I, I completely agree, and I know that's your space, but um, just personally from my user experience and, and interacting with companies and some of my um, some of my uh, if you everybody that anybody listening to this that follows my Twitter, whenever a chatbot helps me out on something, I always tweet about it because I'm always so impressed and I'm always like, come on, go get him, little guy. Like I'm, I'm just excited when a chatbot can solve everything for me quickly. Um, that being said, can you give us like kind of like an example, like a case example for maybe some of the listeners that haven't really gone through a great user experience yet with the chatbots that are like, oh, what's this guy Rob talking about? Right. Okay. Fair question. So most of the time when I interact with a chatbot, and maybe your users identify, is there's a few questions and then you get handed off to a person. Um, or you get a chance to enter your email address and then the bot says, okay, I'm going to reach out to you later. So it's kind of frustrating because, you know, you, 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 you reach a chatbot and then you uh, are you think you're going to get some closure, but then you don't. You're handed off to another person, so it's not an ideal feeling. Um, so what's happening now, with new technology, is uh, you can create experiences that can get you all the way to the end, so you don't have to escalate to a human, and that you can give the user immediate gratification. One example might be: um, I have a problem. I want to know the status of my delivery. Can you please look it up? You know, and the bot will know who the user is um, because they, it can see where the user is coming from and uh, or there could be some kind of login or something. And then it can actually pull from a database. It could pull from any number of databases. It can understand thousands of natural language queries. And you can really get all the way to the end of the service experience without ever escalating to a person. What's one of the things um, that you see right now, whether it's already in play or being developed, um, it's not out yet, that just excites you? It's just something that you're like, oh, man, this is going to just, we're, we're just getting better and better every day. Um, you, Adam, are you, you're going to edit this, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, of course. So. What's one of those, what's one of the things that, you know, just get you excited so that it's like it could be developed already, it could be um, in the making. I mean, what's one of those things that just gets you out of bed and you're like, oh, man, this is like, this is going to be great. Okay. So, I mean, the table is already set. The technology exists. And what really excites me is that companies are waking up to the fact that the technology can be implemented and they can actually 
make a huge dent already. Um, so it's not even about um, innovation at this point. It's about implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, what I mean by that is about $200 billion is spent on, on live agents uh, per year, uh, generally answering the same questions over and over again. And when we see enterprise companies, Fortune 500 companies, saying, hey, you know, this technology has been around for a few years. Google Dialogflow is one example. Um, we've been putting off learning how to use it because we weren't sure if it was worth the investment. But now companies are waking up to the fact that, hey, you know, this bank is using it, so maybe our bank should use it too. Uh, or this healthcare company is using it, so maybe we should use it too. And they're hiring people who can program natural language understanding frameworks, and there's kind of an explosion happening right now. So it's not really about the technology that's coming down the pipe that excites me. It's more the attitude, the shifting attitude of companies. Man, that is exciting because to me, it just means for our consumer experiences across the board, they just have the uh, the uh, potential to get better and faster. So, I mean, that that excites me too. Um, so let's. Uh, I do want to spend some time on the Genentech uh, product launch with your software. Um, so tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, that that's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, we we couldn't be more thrilled to be part of that because uh, we're, we're recording this during the pandemic um, of you know to 2020 right now in May. And, you know, to have a client like Genentech, which is owned by Roche, which is uh, the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world, and they're a really good one, um, is a privilege for us. Um, that, what we're doing with them is an internal-facing uh, use case. So Genentech is using uh, our technology, along with Dialogflow, to shorten the time it takes to do trials, clinical trials, so that they can release therapies quicker and treatments. And, and this can apply to things like vaccines, but also just treatments and medications, and even in some cases, things that apply to COVID-19 patients right now. So, uh, and this, this has been um, publicly disclosed uh, probably with maybe a month ago uh, when they started launching this, and the math is really fantastic. Uh, if you do the numbers and really calculate how much time you can save um, on these clinical trials by providing information and databases and knowledge bases using natural language understanding, um, you can actually save, and this is a crazy number, so prepare yourself, you can actually save 136 years in one year wow. using this technology. So to have 136 like that, years, hold on, you can't like just glance over that, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well no, that's, that's the number that was approved uh, to release. And, and the reason is because you've got you know, thousands of queries, and then you've got a couple of days before the answers come back from the people. And I can't get into too much detail about um, what's going on internally over there because, you know, it is a big company, one or under NDA, yeah, but I can just re rehash what's in our, our published article and our blog post is that, you know, there's no, multiple departments running multiple clinical trials and multiple questions coming in every day from doctors and patients and so forth. And then there's, you know, sometimes it's different time zones because it's a global company. So we're talking about technology that can get any answer to any person instantly in that ecosystem rather than, you know, waiting a day or two or three or not getting the answer or having it go escalated to a live person where they're spending 15, 20 minutes on a call with someone. So if you add up all those chunks of time, you actually do get, you know, within a year's time, you're saving 136 years. I think it's, uh, if you want to read more about it, you can go to blog.bodcopy.com and read the, the public disclosure about the Genentech use case. It's really a fascinating use case. And, and it doesn't just apply, of course, to the pharmaceutical industry. There's ramifications that are more profit-oriented for, like, banks, insurance, retail, et cetera. Man, that is exciting. Um, well, first off, congrats on that. Um, and we're about out of time for this episode. So that being said, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on bot copy, um, what are the right types of, of um, clients and or companies, whether it's size or industry or otherwise, um, that are typically a good fit for bot copy? And what's the best way for them to follow up? Well, you know, we welcome all kinds of companies in every category, sector, virtual, in every country in the world. And these range from students who are kicking the tires all the way to Fortune 5 companies. Um, 
because this is a technology that's going to be ubiquitous, just like everyone has a website. We, you know, we predict that everybody is going to have a chatbot and not last year's chatbot or the year before, but a chatbot that actually can be really personalized and, and operate more like a human being. Um, so it, it's really hard to pin down the exact type of customer. We'd recommend anyone who wants to do business in the years to come, you know, to, to check out BotCopy. Fantastic. And how can they reach out? BotCopy.com uh, and explains everything. So there's, you know, they'll have to have a Google Dialogflow account, and we have an, a native Google OAuth that will connect them right up, and they'll be right up and running. And we're a lean company that's always ready to step in at a moment's notice and help people out with anything that they're struggling with. Fantastic. Well, Rob, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your work um, over at Bot Copy. And congrats again on the Genentech uh, product launch. That's amazing. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Innovation, definitely give us a, a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments on the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Rob, thanks again for coming on the show. It's an honor. Thank you.